Anybody over there on Zoom? Good morning, everyone. We are going to go ahead and call this more, uh, this meeting to order. It is 9.05, Saturday, October the 15th. Uh, Mike, will you please give the invocation for us? Gracious Heavenly Father, I come to you this morning thanking you for this beautiful day here. Yeah, they're here to decisions that affect not only individual members of the tribe, but as well as all the tribe here. Blessings upon everybody who cannot be here or who wanted to be here. Ask hear their needs and wants. You take care of all the ones that are sick and infirm and could not be here. So I said with us, just give us the insight and open minds to uh, as we progress here with today's meeting to make decisions, nations. I say all this in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Gay, thank you, Mike. <clears throat> Next, we have the um, installation of office. Can I please get a member of the election committee to the front, as well as uh, Larry Mercer? You want to face me or face them? It doesn't matter to me. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, basically, I'll say a line and then just have you repeat after me. Um, good morning, everyone, and thank you for being present today for uh, the BC meeting as well as the installation of Larry Mercer as the member of our uh, business committee. Larry, if you'll repeat after me, please. I, Larry Mercer, as the member... I, Larry Mercer, as a member, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I believe and support, that I believe and support, the policies of the Quapaw Nation, policies of the Quapaw Nation, and the laws of this nation, and the laws of this nation. I further solemnly swear, I further solemnly swear, that I will work diligently, that I will work diligently, toward the goals and objectives of the nation, toward the goals and objectives of the nation. And heretofore commit myself. And heretofore commit myself. Fully to the responsibilities. Fully to the responsibilities. Of this position. Of this position. For the purpose. For the purpose. Of which it was established. Of which it was established. Please welcome Larry Mercer. Uh, Ms. Secretary Treasurer, will you please uh, do the roll call? Member Newton? Present. Member Turley? Secretary Treasurer? Present. Chairman Byrd? Vice Chair Bowden? Present. Member Shawnee? Present. Member Mercer? Form declared. Thank you. Next, we have the reading, correction, and approval of minutes. 
Do we have a motion? Motion by Zach Turley. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mike Sean E. Any discussion? The minutes need to be summarized um, according to Robert's rules of order so that as opposed to being kind of a transcript, it needs to be shortened to include only actions or outcomes. Thank you. Any other discussion? Does that need to be a motion? We, we can uh, amend the motion if you would like. Yes. Um, Mike, would you like to second I'll, I'll that? Second. Okay, seconded by Mike. Amended by Zach, seconded by Mike to include the discussion by Lena. Um, all those, any more further discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. The next we have are the reading correction and approval of electronic phone polls. And I believe Michelle and Zach are going to split those for us and read them. Okay. The first one is to approve, it was to approve the Class Robinson Consulting um, for feasibility study um, determine the, to determine the best use of the Triangle property in Quapaw. And that was approved by majority. The next one, was the, long, the Lakeland contract agreement. We, um, it was brought to our attention that they would like to approve to pay the Lakeland to settle the seven active term lease and contract, contracts between the nation and Lakeland. The nation originally had term lease contracts with Lakeland for all printers and the decision was made to switch to ImageNet, which is directly linked with LaserFish. And so that was approved as well by majority. The next one is a resolution authorizing Joseph T. Bird, Callie Bowden, Weena Catherine Supernaw, and Ben Blosh as authorized signatories on all bank accounts of Highway 166 Community Improvement District and remove all previous signatories from all bank accounts of Highway 166 Community Improvement District. And that was approved as well by majority. There was, the next one was, the poll was a Title VI roof and there was six bids from three different roofing contractors to re-shingle the Title VI and Robert Whitebird Cultural Center building. Um, and that was approved as well with the bid that was presented to us. That was agreed upon. The next one was a donation of two of the horses, two horses not utilized by the Quapa Nation. Um, the horses, they were, they're current, they were, they've been currently residing in Elk Dog, Elk Dog Medicine Ranch under the, the care of Terry Birch. Um, Terry had possession of these horses for several years and utilized them in her veteran rehabilitation program. And they were purchased in 2013 or 14, somewhere along there. Um, she had been feeding them and caring for them and billing the nation for them. So given their age and their current situation, they are living the best useful life possible by staying with, with her. Um, so the tribe, we just decided to donate those to Terry. She was pleased to have them for, and to take care of them for the life that they have left. And that was just approved as well by majority. The next one is a lot purchased from KDF Enterprises in Miami. Um, it was two lots on Main Street in Miami across from the Coleman Theater. I'm not certain yet what we're going to do with it, but um, we have purchased those, purchased those lots. Um, it's in good in a good area, and so that was approved as well by the majority. Uh, the next one is a fundraiser. It was a Lincoln School golf tournament and donation request. Um, Lincoln Schools in Baxter Springs, um, they hold a golf tournament fundraiser, and I believe that was a couple weeks ago. Um, the fundraiser supports all the activities that happen throughout the year at the school, so they, it's a big fundraiser, and um, that was just approved as well. I believe it was 500 that we approved for that. The next one was approving an appreciation dinner for the Arkansas Archaeological Survey Museum. Um, it was requesting approval to host a traditional Quapaw dinner and cover the cost of gifts and food. Um, they hold many of our repa repatriated cultural items in their collections facility. And uh, we wanted to show our, well, the cultural committee, and this was Carrie's idea, and it turned out wonderful, to show our appreciation to the Survey and Museum for hosting a traditional Quapaw dinner, to thank them for the collaborative and continued support of our nation, its heritage, and the cultural sites. 
that was approved as well. And I think I'll let Zach take over from there. <laughs> uh, the next one was to approve or help with a uh, service dog for a four-year-old child that has epilepsy. Uh, and this was requested. It was approved uh, by a majority vote of the business committee. Next phone poll is for CCDF passenger van for the uh, OLC. Uh, it's 2023 Ford Transit uh, van to help transport children to and from the OLC for field trips. Uh, the current passenger van was no longer usable due to damaged seat belts. So right around in a van with no seat belts. Uh, and this was approved by majority vote. Uh, next phone poll is for the Catholic 40 uh, right away easement. Uh, and this was a uh, purchase from a tribal member. Um, to have access to the Catholic 40. And that was approved by a majority vote. The next one was a uh, purchase of the McKibben property uh, up on the corner up here. Uh, I think it's one acre. Uh, and that was approved by a majority vote. Uh, on the next one, it is the LRPA MOA. Uh, mitigation of adverse effects to 3PU0001. Um, and this is through the TIPO program and approved by majority vote. Uh, next is for a building code inspector, which was a new job description, and this was not approved. Um, the reason for that is we are... Uh, have a, a third party uh, compliance uh, person that we go outside with uh, that, that we can send our plans to before we build our buildings. And what that does is that takes the liability off of the tribe by them doing that inspection instead of us hiring someone to do the code inspections and things. Uh, that way if something is wrong when we build the building, they're liable for it and not the tribe. So that's why we did not approve that job description. Uh, QSA Equipment Operator 1 revised job description. So this was a job description that was already uh, existing and it split from one job description into two and just two uh, uh, levels of that job description. Uh, and this was approved. QSA Equipment Operator 2, this is just the second half of that job description. Uh, and it was approved as well by a majority vote. Thank you, Ms. Newton and Mr. Turley for reading all the phone polls. Um, do we have a motion to approve said phone polls? Motion to approve. Motion by Ms. Supernal. Do second. we have a second? A second by Ms. Newton. Any discussion? With no discussion, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Next, we have the approval and disapproval of the treasurer's report. Do we have a motion? Motion by Mr. Turley. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Supernall. Any discussion? With no discussion, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Those abstaining? Motion carries. Next, we have the approval and disapproval of the director and subcommittee report submitted. Do we have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Motion made by Ms. Supernaw. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Shawnee. Any discussion? With no discussion, um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Um, next, we have the chairman's report. Um, the chairman is unable to attend today, so what we have decided to do is ask everybody just to go ahead and announce just some of the things that have um, are getting ready to occur upcoming events. Um, one thing I do want to make a quick announcement on is that after 20 years of service to the Quapaw Nation, Donna Mercer 
um, announced her retirement last month, and we would like to appreciate her service and contributions to the great nation and wish her very best in the future. So thank you, Donna, for everything you have done. Um, Michelle, would you like to discuss some events that are upcoming? Well, I just want to make sure if anybody, was, if Carrie B was on Zoom or if anyone from the Cultural Committee wanted to share anything on the fall gathering. If not, I was just, I was, I attended their meeting on Thursday and I thought if, I wasn't for sure if she was going to be here or who may want to present that. But just to give you a quick update on um, November 20th is the fall gathering the Cultural Committee has been working on. Um, it will begin at noon and it's on a Sunday and it's like noon to six, but there's going to be stomp dancing at the end. So it's most likely going to go longer. Um, the f There's going to be the f kind of the theme for the food is chili. So it's like chili, hot, chili dogs, Frito pies, chili mac. So anything involving chili, chili crackers. Um, some of the activities I just took notes on. I know they plan on having social dancing, Indian dice, foot races, face painting and arts and crafts for the kids. Um, stick course races, um, obstacle course, storytellers, and a cakewalk. And I know there were several other things, but it's it sounds like going to be a really fun-filled day. So just want to encourage everyone that can to, to attend that on November 20th, starting at noon. So thank you. Um, I know they talked about flyers on that as well. I'm not sure honestly who was put in charge of that, but I know they're working on that this week. Um, it's going to be at the pavilion. Well, thank you for asking that. It's going to be at the pavilion. I hope this week. Sooner the better. Yes. So I, I know Carrie had mentioned I know they're working on that. So thank you, Barb. Thank you, Ms. Newton. Uh, Zach, will you please report on? Uh... Uh, so I had uh, Fire EMS had asked me to let everybody know uh, if you receive a bill from the EMS, if you get transported by them, please notify them and let them know. We, we still have some of those slipping through the cracks. We're, we're doing our best we can to, or they are to uh, separate those out and write them off before they get to you, the tribal member. But if, if you receive one, you're not being billed. One thing that, that did change is we, we uh, have a collection agency now to uh, start collecting those bills that's not being paid. So if you happen to get a... Um, bill from the collection agency if you will just call us that will not affect your credit we can take it right back off we made sure of all that before we started so if you slips through the cracks and you, you miss the bills and you don't notify us and then you catch one from the collection agency all you got to do is call or send us an email at, or them at the fire department i keep saying us used to, used to work there um send them a, a, a email or a call and let them know that you got that and they will they will get all that taken care of for you but it just helps increase that revenue uh, for, for the service that they provide um also the fema mitigation plan which is a five-year plan that is going to be uh, put out for public comment on november 1st and what that is is it's just a plan for disasters things like that that affect this area but it, it uh, helps us obtain grants uh, like the uh, uh, safe room that's at the OLC, um, those types of things. Those all come from FEMA grants that we get due to this five-year plan. So it'll come out for public comment for two weeks starting on November 1st. Uh, there will be a hard copy uh, here at the admin building and one at the library. And then it'll also be available online. Uh, you can just send those. It'll have a link there where you can send an email with any comments that you may have on it and send that in and we can get that straightened out if you see something that's wrong or, or see something that you think may need to be added. Uh, get that out to you and, and get that to Randy who will fix it. Thank you. Ms. Superna? So I think we all recognize that you know, the needs of the tribe have changed tremendously, especially if we think about, you know, the growth and the expansion that have taken place in services and our enterprises over the course of the last couple of decades. Because of that, we took a very broad look at our organizational structure, um, the way that our departments and enterprises are designed and the reporting relationships. The net result is we've decided to add five new executive director positions. Um, and in essence, it flattens out the organization so that the business committee will actually have additional individuals' roles um, 
reporting directly into the business committee. That's intended to do a couple of things. One, to increase accountability, and number two, to more clearly delineate the authority that each one of those areas has. You know, so these are going to be individuals who are lead organizations such as tribal member services. So those were all the things, you know, the services that we as tribal members commonly use. Another area would be resource management, to bring together common enterprises and activities to get a better line of sight and leadership as we think about our strategic plans in the coming years. So again, it flattens out the organization. It also increases um, some developmental opportunities. One of the wonderful things that I've learned in the last couple of months since taking my oath of office is really the tremendous talent that lies within the tribal nation. We want to make sure that people do have uh, career development opportunities, and we think that this structure, we know this structure is going to actually help do that. Okay. So again, it's, it's five new positions. In addition to that, we are resurrecting the um, business committee executive secretary role. Um, so where we are right now is those job descriptions are all but finished. And um, then we'll go through the normal process based on our, our policies and our procedures uh, to make those positions available initially to internal employees then to tribal members and then it you know, goes, goes more broadly. But we will be following our current policies and procedures to fill all of these positions. And I think we're pretty excited about what this can help us do and primarily to fuel our growth for the next few decades. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Shawnee. Yeah, with the, along with what Wina said, within the last two months, we've uh, taken a look at a, the structure of things here as well as, and uh, we're starting to uh, move our procurement department into uh, using the GSA schedule so we can buy things in bulk. It doesn't cost us anything to be on the GSA schedule, but it does offer a great, uh, I guess you could say a great reduction in price because you're buying things in bulk from the government or from contractors with the government. So that's why we're going to head that way. Uh, plus the uh, supply and demand right now is very tight. So we are finding problems of just going out on the open market and getting stuff. If you do, you're getting anywhere from 100% markup to 200% markup on things. So with this uh, being on the GSA schedule, we should be able to get it uh, pretty much at cost, if not at a discount, if as long as we buy in bulk. So. That's why we're headed with the uh, procurement area within the tribe. So that's what I'd like to report on. Thank you. Very exciting. Thank you. I don't want to leave you out, Mayor Larry. Mr. Mercer, do you have anything you'd like to say? Or are you good? All right. <laughs> Thank you and welcome to the team. Okay. I believe that's it for the chairman's report. Now we will go ahead and move on to the accounting report with Mr. Eric Boone. Good morning, everyone. Um, this morning, um, September was a month or the year end, the fiscal year end for um, fiscal year 2022. Um, so what the numbers I'm reporting are for September and the entire fiscal year of 2022. Um, on our general fund, September, we've received $2.1 million in revenue, bringing our total for the year to 26.7 million. Actual expenses in September were 3.25 million, bringing our total for the year to 29.3 million. Uh, tribal member health benefits in September were 520,000, uh, bringing our total for the fiscal year to 4.6 million. Social services expenses in September were 211,000, bringing our total for the year to 2.95 million. And our education expenses in September um, we're 161,000. That wraps up our fall semester uh, funding. Still a few trickling in, but 
that's a pretty good number, uh, bringing our total for the year on education expenses to 1.35 million. Um, and then I also want to mention that in September, we, we received a $500,000 distribution from our um, tribal enterprises, um, bringing our total distributions for the year to 4.35 million. Does anybody have any questions? Good. All right. Thank you very much, Eric. We appreciate it. Next on the agenda is subcommittee reports, and it looks like we have the Constitution Committee. Um, Roman, are you on the line? I am. Good morning. Can you hear me? I am. Good morning. Can you hear me? Good morning. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, great. You have the floor. So, thank you. Great. So, thank you. Next weekend will be the next weekend um, will be the of the of the. Um, I'm getting feedback from him, sir. Okay, next weekend is the special meeting of the special meeting called by Chairman Bird, um, by Chairman uh, Bird. A, few uh, a few months ago. I just want to give a quick update of what to expect at that special meeting. Uh, what we'll be doing is going through the items that were proposed on Jan July 4th at the uh, General Council meeting. And the general council will have the opportunity to amend, the opportunity to change the the language of those items before they appear on a ballot. After this meeting, we will be compiling those items that the general council has voted to rework. Voted to. Uh, reword or approved, and those will be submitted to the election committee, who in turn will um, compile and announce a special election. However, prior to that, and probably one of the, the more important parts is that we will need to submit a signed petition of at least 100 registered voters, and we will have that petition uh, available and written at the um, at the end of the meeting, so we'll have it in real time uh, uh, created so that people could sign as uh, as we are wrapping up. We do have a block of rooms for anybody who um, uh, spend the night. Uh, Vice Chair, could you tell us how many rooms uh, we had blocked? Didn't get that answer from the downstream. I, I'm being told that I believe we have 50 rooms blocked. And I'm just going to clarify a little bit more, sir, because it is kind of difficult to hear you that um, next Saturday, the 22nd, we are having a special general council meeting at downstream in the pavilion to discuss all the proposed items that were mentioned during the July 4th general council meeting. And at that time, people have the opportunity to amend strike the language for these amendments before they go on the ballot. A petition will be ready at the end of that meeting for everybody to sign, and we need at least 100 members to be able to get that measure on the ballot. Um, we are highly encouraging participation. We even have bets going on with how many people we think are going to show up. So, you know, please, 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 this is very important. Your voice is very important. We are trying to fix holes, you know, trying to strengthen our government, and we need your input. This is everyone's governing document. This is how we govern ourselves. So it's very important. So uh, carry on, Roman. I apologize. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's all that I had to report. Um, if anybody's got any questions in the meantime, uh, please feel free to reach out to constitution.committee at quapawnation.com or shoot me a, a message, text, call, um, whatever you whatever you feel like. Uh, we're available. Um, can you clarify how many items you will be um, discussing? Roman. There will be 17 items. Okay. 
sounds like a long day. Good thing we're going to have food and gas cards. <laughs> All right, does anybody have any questions for Roman? Roman, I do have a question. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Um, will tribal members have an opportunity at some point during the meeting to make recommendations on additional changes, um, not to be finalized on October the 22nd, but priorities for the Constitution Committee afterwards? Yes, if we could include that in the agenda, I believe that we could have a, spe a specified forum for that, not necessarily an open forum, but a specific open discussion on these items. Great, thank you. I'll make sure it's on the agenda. Yes, this meeting is for the governing resolution only, and it is subject matter only. No action will take place other than signing a petition if you agree to the language. That is it. It is subject matter only, all discussion. Special GC, next Saturday, 10 22 good number, at 9 a.m. Food, gas cards will be there. It's going to be a party. All right. Thank you, Roman. It's appreciated. And so is the entire Constitution Committee because you guys really do put in the work. It's, it's tiresome and it's appreciated. Thank you. Oh, one more. We have one more question from Steve Owens. Yes. Uh, is it? Okay. I guess I need a mic. <laughs> Now, with the 17 items, and I know that would be a lot to put on a ballot, if there's some, is it possible that, um, like, if it gets narrowed down to less than 17 items, is it possible for the general counsel to make that decision? Like, I know uh, all these items are good, but if some of them want to keep it simple and maybe have just a couple, three items on that, um, would that be possible at this general council next week? I have. Yes, that would be possible. We could combine multiple items that uh, we are sure of. Of course, that would be a motion from the floor that uh, would need to take place to uh, suspend the agenda and make amend the agenda. Thank you. All right, are there any more questions for the Constitution Committee? Are there any other subcommittees that would like to give a report, either in person or virtually? We have Grace Good Eagle with the the elders uh, elders committee. Are we're ready to go? We will be leaving on Tuesday morning. It's an overnight trip. Tuesday and Wednesday. We'll be heading west. We'll be going over to uh, Osage Country, Pahuska, Willow Rock, uh, and then we're going to go south from there, and we'll be going to uh, staying overnight in Norman, and then the next day, then, we'll be at the Indian Museum in Oklahoma City. So we are very much looking forward to that. We've got a full bus. And the whole thing, uh, several people are, are planning to go. So I would just like your prayers for all of us for traveling mercies. Uh, could be cooler weather, whatever. But we're just so pleased that we can make this trip. It's been a while because of the pandemic and the whole thing. But we are doing this. Uh, so again, um, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gideon. Okay. And like she mentioned, uh, the trip is full. 
And with that being said, and I don't want to get into all the details of it, but it has been decided to have another trip in the spring for those who can't make it on this trip. So stay tuned for that. The details are not done yet, but for those who can't make it this round, we're going to make another trip happen. So thank you. Um, are there any other subcommittees out there that would like to report? You gonna be wearing your t-shirts? All right. Okay, well, if we were done with subcommittees, the next thing on the agenda is new business. Would anybody like to take that first resolution? The first one is resolution number 101522-A. Um, it's a res resolution authorizing the removal of public defender Jeremy Otis, and that's due to him resigning from his position with the Quapaw Nation Court on September 2nd of 2022. Do we have a motion to approve this resolution? Make a motion. Motion by Michelle. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Shawnee. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Zach, will you please take that next one? I move to adopt resolution. 101522B. This is a resolution authorizing participation in the Identifying Our Needs, a survey, survey of elders, Native elder social and health needs assessment. Okay, so you went ahead and made a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Newton. Do we have any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Jack, you. Ms. Wiener? Resolution 1015-22C. It's a resolution authorizing the Quapa Nation Business Committee members to conduct business with the Bureau of Indian Affairs. It's really an update on um, signatory authorities, and it includes the individuals being authorized to conduct business. Make a motion to approve. We have a motion by Ms. Superdon. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Shawnee. Do we have any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Mr. Shawnee, would you like to take the yeah. next one? Uh, this is resolution 101522D, a, resolu a resolution authorizing the Quapaw Nation Business Committee members to conduct business with the uh, Office of the Special Trustee. I'll make a motion to approve. Okay, we've got a motion by Mr. Shawnee. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Superna. Do we have any discussion? With no discussion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those aye. opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Mr. Mercer, would you like to take the next one? Okay. That's fine. I will take this next one. It is resolution 101522-E. It is a resolution to approve and authorize the implementation of the operations and maintenance plan. Do we have a motion to accept that? Make this a is the maintenance plan for the Ogapa Learning Center. Motion by Ms. Newton. Do we have a second? Second by Zach Turley. Do we have any discussion? With no discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Next, we have resolution 101522-F. This is a resolution to request continued grant funding for the period of April 1st, 2023 through March 31st, 2026 for the Title VI Caregiver Program. Do we have a motion to accept this resolution? Make the motion to accept this resolution. A motion made by Mr. Shawnee. Do we have a second? Second by Mr. Turley. Uh, any discussion? With no discussion, those in favor say aye. Aye. Those aye. opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. 
Resolution 1015-22G. This is a resolution to adopt the fiscal year 2023 budget. Do we have a motion to accept the 2023 budget resolution? Make the motion. Motion by Ms. Newton. Do we have a second? Second by Mr. Turley. Any discussion? Yes. A um, couple of items on, on the budget. So we have experienced a pretty marked increase year over year in comparison to last year. And I, I did want to give a, just a little bit of insight as to some of the drivers uh, for that increased budget. And it is a balanced budget. That's probably the most important message to, to convey. And, and some of those have to do with a couple of, of new areas that we want to um, focus on heavily um, this year. You know, resurrecting the NAGPRA program. We also have a new forestry program, as well as um, additional investment in our food sovereignty program. So those are all important areas. But the vast majority of the increase is really coming from the Department of Public Safety. I think most people have heard extensive discussions on the, the impacts on tribal nations coming from uh, McGurk and for us specifically the Lawhorn, where you know our jurisdiction becomes, you know, our law enforcement jurisdiction becomes much more significant, broad, and the services demanded. Um, is, has increased tremendously as well. And I know, Zach, I'll, I'll ask you to, to bring up some specifics, especially for the marshals, but I wanted to make sure people understood that even from the tribal court, we've got a pretty tremendous increase year over year. So there have been 100 criminal cases that have gone through Quapaw Nation tribal court since those decisions came down, and 80 of them in 2022. So it's a tremendous increase over time. We need to continue investing in that. We need to continue focusing on making sure that our court is as strong as possible. And then Zach, would you talk a little bit about what's happening on the law enforcement side? Just just to give you a little reference on that, prior to McGirt, a year before they'd done 12 criminal cases in our court. That kind of shows the growth of it. Um, with the marshal service, uh, prior to McGirt, they ran uh, around 700 to 800 calls uh, or uh, reports that they would they would write a year. Uh, they're pushing 2,700 to 3,000 calls now in the first year of McGirt. Uh, so you know, naturally, staffing had to be increased to cover all those calls. They went from an isolated area, a pretty small area that they were responsible for solely to 98 square miles. So if you have a marshal at downstream uh, handling a situation and they get a domestic out, um, you know, west of commerce, and you only have one guy on duty, uh, it may be a little bit before he's able to get there and help that person. So that's, that's why that staffing had to increase uh, to be able to cover those. So uh, it's about a 610% uh, increase in the the reports and the calls that they have been receiving. That's that's probably the biggest part of that budget increase. So all of this results in just shy of a $5 million budget increase last year compared to current year. So I mean, it's spread across a number of, of areas, but it is a significant increase. I'd love to be able to say that it corresponds roughly to the rate of inflation, but that's not entirely accurate. Um, you know, these, these are needed safety services as well as other areas that we think are important to us as a nation both culturally um, as well as social services thank you both of you for that discussion on that uh, do we have a motion to adopt 10 15 22 oh gosh i didn't see it look up miss barbara yes it, there's a budget for this year. Mama, please. Right. Say the total budget. Oh, sorry. It's 32 and a half million. Are there any other questions? Oh, <laughs> okay. Any other questions?
Mr. Addington, can you please come up here and answer uh, Ms. Linda's questions? You, Melinda, you might have to repeat that so he can hear you. I heard you so. Yeah, there's okay, there's 15 you. of the uh, marshals that's actually in patrol capacities. We do have uh, some of the marshals that's on staff, one at the Kyoto Center at the front desk, and then we've got uh, one marshal that's actually over at the methadone clinic. And then we have uh, four investigation uh, components. One of those is a drug investigator, one, two of them are general crimes investigators, and then a supervisor. And then uh, one of those investigators is on the U.S. Marshal Task Force. Uh, we have one investigator that's an arson investigator as well. So they have some specialty uh, uh, training and stuff that they do in certain areas. So uh, there's 15 of those positions. It's actually out in the field doing uh, patrol work. Uh, and three of those is included in the downstream, is actually stationed at downstream. Thank you. Are there any more questions regarding the budget? Any questions online? Okay, thank you. Okay, so do we have a motion to adopt 101522G? You made that motion. Yeah, okay. Oh, you we were in discussion. I'm sorry, I'm getting backwards. Any other discussion? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Resolution 101522H, a resolution to approve the utility assistance benefit increased. So I'll just read it to make sure everybody's aware. The utility assistance benefit for those under 65 years of age will be increased from 1200 to 1400 annually. So that's a $200 increase. And for those age 65 and older, uh, increase from 1500 annually to 1700. So again, a $200 increase across the board for all age groups. Thank you. Do we have a motion or a motion to accept that resolution? Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Ms. Supernall. Do we have a second? Second by Mr. Turley. Do we have any discussion? One thing I did want to point out was um, last year there was an increase as well, and I think we're, we're particularly pleased to be able to increase it two years in a row for everybody's benefit. So this is a really good thing, and it's a, it's a, happy, it's a happy occasion. It really is. All right. Thank you very much. If you didn't hear me, I said this increase will add $360,000 to the budget. So although it's only 200 per person, probably it is a big increase. Mm-hmm. And if you want, yeah. Well, I have been in that, was in that same position when I was caregiver, came back from my parents, and it's just, it's within the bylaws, and that would have to be changed in order for multifamilies to use that. It's very difficult to budget for multiple families in one house. So, you know, in order to be able to have the funding available for all members, that is the standard that is set. It's a per household. Um, you know, one of these days, it would be great to do it per member, but we are not there yet. But this is just a way to be able to serve everybody and to do the best that we can.
Are there any other discussion about the budget right now? Okay, with no further, oh, Grace. Ms. Good Eagle. Thank you. Um, I was notified oh, a couple of months ago about the increase here in Oklahoma, increase about our electric bills, our water bills, and we have seen those increases. So I contacted Joseph to be sure about the tribe because it's going to impact us. And so the increases are going around. But thank you for the uh, increase because it will help. My only question was, when will this be effective? January 1st. Thank you. And that's the calendar year. Yes. Anake. Ganage. Are there any more other uh, discussion or questions regarding the budget being proposed for 2023? I do have a question on Zoom. It's not really open forum, but it does relate to the budget. So I'll go ahead and ask it now. Um, Benjamin Waters asked, um, what does the $32 million budget cover exactly? So that the if, if the questions around the thirty two million um, that basically covers um, the new departments that we talked about, um, as well as the increase in expenses for the administrative area, the courts, DPS. It's basically all of the above. There's another component of the budget that covers the other enterprises, and that would include things like Quapa Service Authority, Quapa Cattle Company, the Cleaning Corp that got started last year, as well as Counseling Services and Food Services Authority. Yeah, it's everything on the governmental side. Mr. Waters, did that answer your question for you? Yeah, so the gaming industry has been excluded from the $32 million. Yeah, that does not include the, the budgets for um, any of the casinos. That is That's operational. Sorry. We've got Mr. Steve Owens. Hold on one second, Steve. We've got the mic coming. I just want to say um, just a heartfelt thank you um, for the budget increase, for this budget increase. I know it don't seem like a whole lot, but $200 more compared to last year is $200 we can use to utilize on our electric bill and everything. And as a resident and somebody that uh, has utilized that, I just offer my appreciation. Thank you for those words. Is there any other discussion about the budget? Any other questions? Okay. Offer a question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. The next thing we have are appointments of subcommittee members. Uh, we're going to have some appointments this month and then next month we will have some more. Uh, we're waiting for some validation to make sure people want to sign up. Um, I would like to make the motion to, with concurrence of the business committee, to put Bonnie Gilmore Shock on the elders committee. Do we have concurrence from the BC? Yes. Any disagreement? Okay. 
motion carries. Uh, next, we would like to form a new committee uh, for our children, the children's committee. And the idea behind this committee is to have them plan the events that are for our children, whether it's Camp Quapa or the Easter egg hunt or the Christmas party or the Halloween party or any kind of cultural fun event party that we want to do for our children. We're wanting to get it uh, narrowed down into a children's committee. So we have asked around, and these are the people we would like to place on the committee. And that is Billy Bertram, Lori Schaefer, Ashley McLeod, Susan Davis, Gabriel Gray, Debbie Ray, and Virginia Mouse. Do we have concurrence from the BC to put those members on a new committee? Yes. yes. Any non-concurrence? Okay. Well, the motion carries, and we now have a new children's committee. I'm excited to see how that works out. I hope it works out well. Okay, next on the agenda, we have donations. And our first donation is from Philip High School Music. Somebody like to read that request? Ms. Newton? This trip is for the four-year band of music students who are seniors who have completed all four years of band music plus kept their grades up. Um, the students... The student has maintained straight A's all four years. The educational trip will be going to Washington and New York City. Only eight seniors will be going on the trip. Um, this is um, for Danessa Heltel. Heltel? I'm not sure exactly. I can't read it very well. Um, but she is requesting not any specific amount um, to be able to go on this trip. She's actually, she has stated that she's got a third job even to help her to raise funds to go on this trip. The hmm, I believe it's around, I don't know if it's 5,000 or 2,500. I don't know how that worked. The total is 5,000. She is requesting any amount. Oh, two separate kids. Okay, I didn't read that correctly. I'm sorry. Because I'm only getting one tribal name on here for a student. So they're siblings? Is that? No. Yes, I'm not reading where it states anywhere that there's two of her children going. I just read the one trouble member with the one roll number. Just. I'd like to make a motion that we um, donate 500 to this individual for the trip. Second. Is it for one individual or two individuals? Just the one that's listed. There's only one listed. Okay, the one listed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a motion to donate $500 for the Philip High School musical trip. And we had a second by Ms. Superna. Do we have any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Next, we have a donation request from the New Hope Christian Church. This is for $1,000, and it is to, it is one of the area churches that supply a monthly food pantry. The students from the high school also assist along with the National Honor Society in assisting in preparation and fundraising along with church donation participation. This is an estimated one half to one third of the Native American family participation. There's a motion for $1,000 for the food pantry. Or is there a motion? Uh, Miss Barbara, would you like to add anything to that?
That's amazing. That's an amazing community service that you guys are able to do. And mm -hmm. we thank you for doing that work. It takes all of us to make it happen. Um, yes, and your uh, summary here says that approximately 50 families each month receive this service. Oh, that's good. Okay, so we have a motion by Mr. Turley to donate $1,000 to the food pantry. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Shawnee. Do we have any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Next, we have the NICWA, which is the National Indian Welfare Association. Um, they are requesting $5,000. It is a sponsorship that ranges from $1,000 to $25,000. Um, it is to sponsor their upcoming 41st annual Protecting Children Conference. It is a conference that is being held in Reno, Nevada in April, and they are seeking sponsorship from the Quapaw Nation. Do you know if we have donated to the past, in the past to this uh, association? This is a new one. Would anybody like to take action on this or would we like to pass? Do you know anything about this, Linda? Like, Indian Children Child Welfare Association. Even though we're seeking sponsorship, as far as attendees, do they is there a registration fee that they agree to? Do? Or I, so that was my question. Each sponsorship level has uh, like a package, so to speak. What it involves. It's like um, some of it is percentage off registration. Some is a free pass. Yeah, they're all different depending if you yes. donate anywhere between 1,000 to 25,000. So many attendees would still have to It's looking like it, yes. That, that one specifically is two complimentary conference registrations. Yes. Which is $1,000. Or we could just attend. There, there's the lowest one is a thousand dollar. It's called Council Friend Sponsor, and it's a fifty percent off one conference registration, a two hundred fifty dollar value. That's the lowest one that they have on there. They are requesting five thousand, which is a Sacred Circle sponsor. Five thousand. I make a motion that we pass on this donation and encourage, you know, if, if we can find participants that are really going to benefit from this particular conference, I think that's fabulous. But I do make a motion to uh, reject this as a donation or sponsorship. Okay, so we have a motion to reject this donation. Do we have a second? Second by Zach. Do we have any discussion? Okay, thank you. Uh, any other discussion? Without further discussion, I'm going to call for the question. Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Any abstentions? Motion to deny carries. Next, we have a donation for a veteran's powwow. 
on October 22nd. They are requesting uh, donation of goods and services. November, November 5th. Oh, November 5th. I'm sorry. I saw the deadline. I read the wrong one. November 5th. It is in Springfield, Missouri. Last year, we made a donation for $500. And it is a 5013C organization. Just to add a little more flavor, it says uh, the American Indian Center of Springfield is a local based service organization serving the needs of the Native Americans in the Springfield area. We are seeking donations for the American Indian Center Veterans Powwow we are holding on November 5th, 2022 on the MSU campus. We are happy to honor all veterans in Southwest Missouri and beyond. Is there any action to make a donation or would we like to reject this donation? Make a motion to do the 500 again. Okay, motion by Mr. Turner to donate 500. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Shawnee. Any discussion? No discussion. I'm going to call for the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Does anybody want to take the next one for me? This one, I'll take this one. This one last year, I remember. And um, this individual, um, Wendy Kudra, thank you. Um, she is requesting um, $500. She is an individual who helps cancer patients because she has previously had cancer and she tries to get back. She supplies embroidered PJs for cancer patients at KU Hospital. Um, and she works on getting those out during this month, Cancer Awareness Month. Um, and it's, it's a pretty, I read, as I read through this, and she likes to embroider, I am needed on the pajamas. And so it makes a, a big impact um, to individuals that are going through cancer. And I'd like to make a motion that we donate the 500 towards this. Second. We have a motion by Ms. Newton to donate 500. We have a second by Ms. Supernaw. Do we have any discussion? Without discussion, I'm going to call for the question. Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. And then the last donation we have is for the wine dot after prom. Uh, they are requesting $1,000. And in their letter, it states that this year they have 33 total tribal students in their 11th and 12th grade that will benefit from any donations. This is for their annual after prom project at the Wyandotte High School. Do we have a motion? Make a motion to donate a thousand. Motion by Mr. Turner to donate a thousand. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Newton. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. That closes up donations. Next on the agenda is our open forum. And there is one thing I would just like to briefly say, and I really, <clears throat> I don't want to open any wounds, but <clears throat> I firmly believe that in open forum, you know, everybody should be heard. Every tribal member needs to be heard. But certain subject matters are more sensitive and more confidential. And uh, I believe there is a time and a place for that. And after last month's meeting, I want to apologize for not controlling the meeting myself because it was public and it got a little out of hand. And I want to apologize to the departments that were um, talked about and that would be the administration department and the human resource department and I have personally apologized to them and futuristically going forward I will do better on my behalf not allowing something like that to happen so I just want to say sorry to them and just move forward um, 
now I'm going to go ahead and open up the floor. Does anybody on the board have anything they want to say as far as open forum goes? I would also like to apologize. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. I apologize. I want to do the um, in memorandum real quick for our tribal members that we have lost over this um, last month. And um, those names are Anna McKibben, Rihanna Beats, and Marcy Hatfield. Do we have anybody else? Chief Fallis. He, he passed away last night. He retired three months ago. Um, I heard that, you know, he said when he was done, he was going to be done. And he, he controlled his life and he made it happen. So, you know, that was, he lived a long life. So um, at this time, uh, can we please have a moment of silence for those we have lost? Kind of gay. Miss Amy, you have the floor. Abby, sorry. Yeah, no, I got it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I looked up. I apologize. Okay. I got a couple of things. One is we see so many people being praised at downstream. Talk so much about that other casino and We've got employees that have worked at the little beautiful red-headed stepchild casino called Quapaw Casino for a number of years. And they never get any type of recognition here. None of them. I may have acted up many times in Quapaw Casino, but May I just real quick, last month they were going to be mentioned, but their numbers were not in front of us. And you are absolutely correct. They are the mothership of gaming. They got us up off the ground. They have been there since June 1st, 2000. We are here in October of 2022. You know, it's a hole in the wall. We're working on getting it um, relocated. And we've just done a feasibility study on it. So they're going to get some TLC. They're getting TLC right now. But you are absolutely correct. They have done an amazing job all these years, and they do deserve the credit. Maybe go back from anyone working five plus all the way up and put their names, even the ones who moved during, that went to downstream because of the revamping and everything. Maybe you should add them to that list because they were part of the casino for years. And I really thoroughly enjoyed last business committee meeting. Because so many tribal members actually got to speak out and say how they felt after being afraid for so long. And in some areas, maybe some people might feel like they have spit in their eye. Some of them deserved it. Some didn't, but some do and trying to apologize for people speaking their feelings is spitting back in their eye as well. We're trying to move forward and we're trying to get everyone to focus and to work together, but you telling people that they shouldn't feel this way or they shouldn't say it this way when that's how they feel if you just shut your mouth and open your ears and listen and open your heart, you might understand where they're coming from and they might not think that they talk to one another. But it also plays on your part as well because you are the people that we are 
be looking to to lead us trying to think of that correctly um, you're the parents and when your children are upset they act up because they're looking for you to acknowledge what the problem is and to take that step to fix it. But if you reprimand the child for coming to you, they're not going to come to you. They're going to find ways to take care of it themselves. Ask my mom. I was a horrible kid. I would just like to give a response to that. I firmly believe everybody should be able to speak and say what they want to say. But there is a time and there is a place. And everything needs to be done respectfully and the right way. And that meeting was not controlled. It might have been entertaining for some, but it was not controlled. And that is where my apology lies for not controlling that meeting and doing the right way respectfully for all parties involved. So I'm still going to stand by that. But thank you for your comments. I appreciate that. Next. Yeah. I have a lot of issues right at the moment because, you know, I was denied from the EFA. <clears throat> I have kidney and liver disease. Not that I wanted it, but I have it. <clears throat> and the last trip I made up there, they said my kidneys were failing. Then I got told by the that uh, my health is not in the markets. I hung up on her because I would have cussed her out like a big dog. So I thought, well, spend it. And I'm still sorely upset. Because, you know, we got Larry Mercer up there, who's now on the BC, and shouldn't be on all these other committees. Anybody that's on the BC shouldn't have the right to be on every other committee. We got young people that need to learn about committees, to be on BC, be members, instead of coming sitting over here and listening, and yet people vote or want to put them in, and yet they still don't get voted in. I'm like, how are is the young ones, see, these old ones going sooner or later, they're going to die, or even some young ones, but nobody gives them a chance. Because you all want to sit up there and act like you big dogs. Nobody, you ain't, nobody, you ain't over us. You're, we're your boss. But yet yeah, you're trying to lead us. But you all have conflictions among yourself. Nobody wants to get along. Nobody cares about the real tribe. Nobody cares about people. And I'm to the point. I sit back. You know, everybody thinks, oh, Amy ain't going to say nothing. I can say a lot. But I'm waiting for everybody to try to lead, and nobody lead. We got Joe Bird, who can't even, and Kelly and Michelle, been sitting there and hadn't even went to Washington, don't even know how to walk the halls of Washington. But you all want to sit back and not do nothing. Miss Amy. No, I'm going to tell you. I have a right to speak. You do. Okay, then let me speak. Okay. Whether you like it or not, I'm saying it to you. Because, you know, I see what you do. I've texted you. You never replied. I've called. You don't answer. You say, well, who's this? I told you my name. There was one situation and I was out of pocket, yes. And you knew that I was out of pocket and I apologize. But I'm just wanting to interject because some of the stuff that you were saying is incorrect and it's it, it's not right. But I would like to sit down with you and go over all of your concerns and get you the answers that you need. Can we do that? Can we sit down and have a conversation with you to address all of your concerns? And we want solutions. We don't want problems. What do you want to see from us? Because we're trying to do our best for you. We're trying to get along. We're trying to, you know, 
move the nation forward. And we've got a big, heavy load on our shoulders. And it's not for lack of trying. And we are ears will take it. You want to yell at us. You want to berate us. We'll take it. Well, apparently I'm not getting to say nothing because now you want to stop everything. No, I'm going to stop and just let you speak. Go ahead. But I would like for, I would like to have a private meeting with you to go over this. Yeah, well, we can do that. That's why I was trying to call you that time and ask you stuff. Well, I, I apologize. I apologize. I sometimes... I can't, I don't follow up because I'm busy. I've got a lot of stuff on my plate and I'm doing my best to manage it. And we're all coming together and we're all pulling it together just like today, trying to get all of us up here talking because all of us are involved. It's not just the chairman. It's not just me. Uh, it's all of us. The chairman um, has done a lot of things that shouldn't even been done, but he's not in here. And so, therefore, I like to tell him to his face. But please. But he, don't, he don't answer either. He don't even text back because he just forget about us little members because he's getting paid one hundred twenty five thousand and don't have to worry about for the people. But please, I would like to really sit down with you and go over all of your concerns. But anyway, OK, my concern right now is that you got these people sitting up here, one powwow chairman, one e EFA chairman. And I'm speaking to them because, like I said, they don't give everybody a chance. Liz Tiger could have run in powwow, but nobody gave her a chance. Um, I don't know, Larry Mercer, don't care to know him, apparently, because, you know, when I got denied, that I don't have $90 to stay. I have to stay up there 10 days for this test in Illinois. I don't have money. And when my husband died, well, there went that. And then Social Security, if you want to know the truth, over, baby, and then took it back. It caused me to be in bigger debt. I hate working because it's destroyed my health. And I'm trying to be a strong woman for my kids and my grandkids to get caught up. But I can't, when I got EFA, don't even want to help for the five months that I can be up there back and forth on my appointments. My kidneys are failing. I don't want to be on dialysis, not at all. Can you, are you available next week to sit down with us? Can you sit down with no, us? Because I'm going on that elder trip. Well, let's sit down and let's go over all your concerns. And I, I want to, we we'll dedicate some time for you. Okay, let's just sit down and talk. Are you okay with that? Okay, please. Thank you. But what I'm saying is that everybody's got a need. I hate asking for. Because they're too concerned with their own little family, doing stuff more for them than for the people who have a need. It's not just because you can't pay a car payment or phone bill or utilities or whatever. We struggle. That's why I said about the family. Multiple families have to live together because the bills are getting outrageous. Bro. Even food is outrageous. And I'm, I just got, I'm just upset because I got my daughter who has two master's degrees. And uh, to me, it's like she's the runaround dog taking, doing things for her boss that her boss needs to be doing for herself. And we get, we're, we're to the point, as I raise my kids, to be leaders, not nobody's ass. But apparently, then working here, she feels like she, she's not doing what she's successful, went to school for. I'm talking about my daughter, Molly. 
and she's not getting paid for it. You all don't have degrees, but you get paid for a job that you're supposed to do for the people, the football people. We're not a nation. You know why we're not a nation? Because everybody wants to fight for something that they believe in, but yet won't give them a chance to believe in it. We're a tribe. We're a tribe. Because there's no, uh, there's no coming together. We're, we're just people. But we're people trying to get along. But there's a few of us left that are still pawpaws. We got a lot of adoptees. We got a lot of um, wannabes. But yet, they're in there. And you got to understand that if you're a pawpaw in there, you, you're going to have to speak up. I, everybody got to speak up. Well, you know, I get told later on in the meeting that, oh, you should say this. No, you need to say it. Because I'm going to say what I want to say. And nobody like it. That's all right, too. Because nobody likes me anyway. And I don't care. I didn't come in this world for it to be number one. In this, in this world, to be a humble person. And to raise my kids the way I think they should be raised. I gave instructions. Because I didn't have instructions. But I came from the greenbacks. I came from the white birds, the Washington, Piners. Those are my family. I know my family. A lot of kids don't even know. They say, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm Indian, but I don't know. Nobody's teaching them. Their families ain't teaching their own family. I teach my grandsons how to do eagle, make, uh, uh, prepare an eagle. Wait, does that? Oh, my grandsons, all the Blaylocks and the Tyners, those are my grandsons. Because I'm a, I'm still Shawnee Indian. But I'm also Guapo. And my dad always said that the Guapo really didn't have no way because the Shawnees came. They picked up from the Shawnees. But that's how I was taught. And then a lot of things that I see as a spiritual woman. I am a very spiritual woman. I may get upset, may cuss up a storm, but I know how to go and repent in my closet because that's who I have to see one day. But in the flesh, I do act out of character because I'm still a person. I'm still in the flesh. I still have a heart. I just sit back and listen a lot of times. I sit back and listen when my dad needed help. When Lloyd Buffalo was chair, I told my dad no. My dad was distraught. I'll remember that for the rest of my days. In a way, I'm kind of going there. I'm glad there ain't there. Because she had told me, I went in there, I said, why you got so many enemies in your office? Or I said, why you got so many enemies among the tribe? Oh, it's because of the policies. You know, I just run everything. Yeah, well. You ain't nobody's boss. You ain't my boss. I just didn't want to fire my daughter. Then when I found out she retired, so she got lucky because I sure wanted to walk around myself. So that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Now we can just get everybody else in line, especially at HR. We got a few okay. people in um, to go. I'm going to go ahead and stop you because we just... We just discussed this when we were talking about there's a time and a place. I'm trying to set that time and place with you. Uh, get with us. We'll sit down and let's go through everything.
I do want to hear what you have to cons- hear. I know everybody up here wants to hear what you have to say. We want to help you, but let's sit down and talk about it, okay? Well, I want to answer about the ESA. Well, we can get with the EFA and get some details, but we don't have any right now. Is there any other open forum? Ms. Grace Goodeagle. Thank you. I just wanted to share with you some of the events at this last annual conference at the lead agency, which is the local environmental group. Uh, They started out with efforts on Tar Creek, and we're familiar with that. The Quapaw were very well represented at the conference because of the mining activity, um, Superfund, EPA, and all of that. We know of concerns with Spring River, Neosho River, and flooding. That was a big topic at this last uh, conference. We had representatives from the government and from the universities and local. And what they added, Um, At the second day, on the second day, uh, there was a film that was uh, prepared by the Cheyenne and Arapaho. Indian country is being impacted all over with environmental issues. What they were talking about, the government did build buildings, which were to be used for education and different things. But since they're no longer being used, they are in the process of taking those down and there's a lot of asbestos and different things. So we know how that goes. But I was encouraged that many tribes, we are facing a lot of environmental issues. We are here and we know that and they know that. And so uh, again, I just uh, want to encourage our continued uh, efforts with that. We've got a good group of people here Uh, with our environmental group and the whole thing. But again, just to let you know, there are other tribes and nations out there that are looking at environmental issues. And we've got to take care of Mother Earth. We must take care of Mother Earth. So again, we were well represented at the conference this last year. Contact the lead agency if you want to find out more information on some of the specifics. Thank you, Ms. Gadigal. Ms. Heather Dismuk, next. Good, after- good, good morning. Um, one of the things that I would like to address and topic of discussion is the lack of communication. I have learned more in the last three weeks as an employee of our nation than I have learned in a year of not being an employee. So it, this is not a dig of our IT department. It's not a dig of our communications department. It's just that there is a lot of lip service about transparency. And I just would like there to be more communication about what happens within the tribe, the decisions made in the tribe, the events that go on in the tribe. Because like I said, I've learned more in the last three weeks than I have as just a tribal member the past year. And it's not fair to our members. It's not fair to any of our constituents. It's not fair to any of the outside agencies. And so I know we can do better. And I just wanted to bring that forward. Uh, Cause I know you guys are busy. I know that, um, but we, we need to do better. Because like I said, I've learned more in three weeks than I have in the past year. Thank you for that. Yes, we agree. We actually just had a conversation about it yesterday. Um, Something that we have noticed is that we would like to really pull ourselves off of social media, you know, third party social media and look at try to possibly do it all internal and push our communications because we know we've got everything. We've got Facebook, we've got Twitter, we've got flyers, we've got websites, we've got people talking. We're up here, you know, just giving our reports on things that are going on and we agree. And there's, you know, 5,000 plus members, a thousand things going on. And there's so much more that I just want to sit here and keep talking about. We agree. 
thank you for bringing that to our attention and we are actively working on it. Uh, Ms. Barbara Collier. Um, I'd like to add to what Grace was talking about in the environmental program. The Recently, the uh, seven of the eight Northeast tribes were awarded uh, uh, an award from the uh, for their environmental issue needs. And as I understand it, the Quapaw tribe some time ago dropped out of this organization. And it's a, a wholly, very volatile, uh, important in, in group of individuals and in, in, uh, environmental issues uh, are taken up with this organization. And as I understand it, they could rejoin if they chose to. I don't know why in the past that they have dropped out of it, but um, it was uh, on the One Dot Nations uh, site uh, about the award of, that the tribes had received. And back in 1992, when the environmental programs were all started around here, um, funded by the federal government, um, Quapaws led the way in that. And, uh, you know, it was very, of course, prominent because of the uh, mining and the uh, pollution from the uh, lead and zinc mines. But uh, now that's trickling down. It has been ever since the 90s towards other lands and waters of the area tribes here, the Senecas and the Wyandots and, and some of those people. And um, so it, it, if it, they could look into rejoining this organization, it was always very beneficial. And uh, I'd like to see them uh, get rejoin that so they could be involved, more involved in those things. I don't, like I say, I don't know why the reasoning was I imagine probably funding of some sort, but um, anyway, and then I also added to that uh, Mike Sinar, uh, of course, ex-governor, uh, senator, and so on and so forth for Oklahoma. Um, he was a big environmentalist um, back in his uh, reign of politics, and um, they give an award out every year for the Mike Sinar Award to an uh, important environmentalist at the lead um, meeting. And a Quapa member, Janice Wilson, was awarded that award this year. So she was very prominent in environmental issues for Wyandot Nation, but she is Quapa tribal member. And uh, I think we that was a big honor, you know, for her as well as uh, uh, being a tribal member. Then on another note, um, I'd like to, some information. I'd like somebody to talk about the breast cancer um, things that the tribe has going uh, because I have a donation for that and I don't know who to give it to or when the auction or whatever it is they have. I'd like some more information on the, that That's because I know it's this month in October. Thank you for all of that information, Barbara. We will look into that and see if we can get reconnected. Um, that is fantastic about Janice Wilson. Congratulations to her. And um, is, that, is that it for open forum? Misty. Yes, it, that was it, yes. Misty Scott? We'll get you the information to who you, you got it. Okay, great. Yes, Ms. Davis. Good morning. Just a couple quick things. Um, Amy and Abby, I always appreciate you and your voice. And I pray that nobody ever takes that voice from you. <laughs> but I think that you have to understand too, for several years, and I wanna be as diplomatic as possible, I've not Please. watched the meeting last month, and I think that maybe it was probably a godsend that the special election was held on the same day as that meeting. For several years, tribal members have fallen upon deaf ears. And I think that what happened with Joita was the straw that finally broke the camel's back. That's my personal opinion. And I pray that we do move forward, that you hear our voices. 
I personally am going to, every time I receive an email at my office that comes into family services from a tribal member that's needing services, I'm not going to try to answer that and provide resources. I'm going to forward that to you all because I feel like I know you have a thousand things on your plate, many things, as so do the rest of us as tribal members and employees. But it's important to me that I take this vow that you see what is happening to our people. A few weeks ago, I forwarded you an email from an individual that was impacted by the hurricane in Florida. Last night, I received an email at about 11.30 p.m., and I just forwarded that to you this morning. Minus you, Larry, and I apologize because I do not, you were just, uh, just sworn in this morning, so I do not have an email for you. But that's my commitment to the people that you will know what's happening to us. And so I want you all to know that It is important that we be heard. And I just shared this with Weena the other night. I am not a fifth generation descendant of Downstream Casino, Saracen Casino, Quapo Casino. I'm a tribal member and I'm a fifth generation descendant of George and Minnie Cold Springs Red Eagle. That's who I am. That's who defines me. I'm not defined by the gaming industry. We are people that we're quickly losing our ways if we don't get back to who we are. And that's all I really have to say on that. And then the other thing is, when looking back through um, the minutes and things that were from the previous meeting on 9-16-22, Electronic Pole, Highway 166, uh, community Improvement District Resolution. Could you just please go into a little more about that, about the uh, who the gentleman Ben Wash is in that brief explanation, as well as provide insight of what that Highway 166 Community Improvement District is and what it is. It is located over there by downstream. Uh, ben Blosh is our CFO for downstream. Okay. Um, I'm trying to find... One second. Can anybody else elaborate until I'm looking on it? Go ahead, please. Thank Sorry you. I butcher this. <laughs> I'm looking what for What that it. is, is it's in the state of Missouri, and it encompasses where the Q store's at, and then uh, there's uh, five or six properties across by the RV park there, and then it goes out to the interstate from the three-state marker down to basically the interstate and around and I think it has a little bitty piece on the other side over kind of by the coffee roaster it's it's that area right there and it's um sorry it brings in a revenue like a almost like a housing uh So, so it, it, the county has like a, we get part of the sales tax and stuff from that having that uh, district there, that 166 highway, and that's what it's called. And then we get a check. It's, it's a committee. Yeah. And it's yeah, through it's like, downstream and it's through, it's Missouri and it's that piece of land. And that's just what they called it. It's what it's been named is the highway 166. And if I recall something on that, now that you've better explained this, is it a fair statement to say that as not necessarily the, some of the members that are on board now to the BC, but is it a fair statement to say that there has been times when that revenue came in that you didn't even know what it was as well as some of the administration and it was a monies that kind of could have almost fallen through the crack. So originally two and a half years ago or so, uh, when we all kind of got involved at downstream and got to see a few more of the things that was going on up there, that was one of the things that we found and we, we did not know a lot about it at that time. Uh, there was some checks I believe that was pending that was at, uh, downstream we just didn't know what they were for 
uh, but we did get a hold of the right people and got all that kind of worked out. And that's how we figured out what exactly that was. But there's a, there's a board that sets over that. Um, it's the DDA. It's, it's basically, it was the DDA, but now it's, it's most of the business committee and then the CFO from downstream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it, I, I don't have this stuff sitting right in front of me. It's like, I'm not going to like quote it word for word. I mean, I'm giving you kind of an overview of it. Um, I thought so. I, mean, I can I can bring this stuff in. We can read you the stuff word for word if if you would like. So if you'd like to, you can come sit down and look at all the documents. No, I just now that I know what it is, but it just seems like recall from my own. There's a memory. lot of cleanup. We're we're still cleaning up. A lot of changes, all for the positive. We really are moving in the right direction, and it's just it just doesn't happen overnight. And we're looking for solutions always. And you know what? Yes, we all have differing opinions up here, and I love it because we can agree to disagree and move on, but that's why we're all elected. You know, we're elected here for you. You know, you're right, Amy. We're not over you. You guys are over us. We're here to work for you. So, you know, just let us know what you need, and we're looking for solutions. Okay. Gonna go. Thank you for those questions. Anybody else for open forum before we move on? Do we have anybody on Zoom for open forum? Yes, we do actually. I will go in the order, people that requested it, and I will start with Kelly Flanagan. Good morning. Good morning. I I just have two I just have two simple questions. Oh God, I hear an echo. Okay, so the elder trip is when and Are they meeting at the First American Museum? No, they are meeting at Downstream. And they are leaving on is it Tuesday or what's that? Tuesday morning, oh. the 18th. Tuesday morning, the 18th. 8 o'clock. At 8 o'clock. And they do have rooms no, at Downstream I mean, blocked their off. Destination the, the First American Museum. Yes. And there's a few more stops on the way down there, but it's a you know a one night, two day, one night trip. They're going to go down, stay the night, and then come back. Right. Well, I live in Oklahoma City, and I could like to meet up with them. Oh. Kelly, it's uh, so that's I what I wanted to know, if they were going to be at the First American Museum, and what time did they think they're going to be there? Yeah, Kelly, it's it's we know we will indeed be at the First American Museum, and we can forward the uh, the full itinerary so that you'll have a better idea of the time at which people will arrive there. Would that help? Yes. I apologize for the echo. I don't know why I have it. Yes, Kelly, they will be there Wednesday morning, and Miss Supernaut can send you the um, itinerary so you can meet up with them. Will that work? All right, that would be great. My second question, I'm going to wait for the echo to end before I speak. <laughs> Last month, I asked about the billboards going to Saracen. I was wondering if you were able to find any information out about that. Because last month you told me you were going to look into it, so I was just trying to do a follow-up. You're going to have to give us a minute to pull up our email, Ms. Flanagan. But we do know that it is in the works, and they are working with the highway to make the um, visibility better and make a new exit to the casino. And then when the tower goes up, it's going to have Saracen up at the top as well. It's going to be very visible. Um, Anybody else get into your email quicker than I am? <laughs> well, yeah, that was just a question I asked last month, and I was just wondering if you had any follow-up. We did talk to him about it. We're looking through our emails right now to try to find it. All 
All right, thank you. I'll let Zach go ahead and continue to see if he can find the update and we'll move on to the next open forum question. Okay, I've got Benjamin Waters. I will go ahead and give you permission to unmute. Hello, Mr. Waters, can you hear us? I can hear you, good morning. Good morning, you have the floor. Could you or any other sitting description of the current EPA responsibility? I'm sorry, Ben, you are- the SDA responsibilities. Can you please repeat that? I, you were cut up in the middle of it. Okay. <clears throat> Could you give me a brief overview of the responsibilities currently tasked to the DDA and SDA? I'm trying to think of how to answer that, uh, Ben. Please just give me a minute. Sure. We come together as a board and we meet with the uh, directors, whoever that might be. It's usually the general manager, the CFO, and um, surveillance. And they will give us their reports. And there is a certain level of um, purchasing authority that we have. Anything over 30000 comes to us. Um, we do not do the, we try to stay out of the daily operations of the businesses. It's more of an overview on um, bigger expenditures, uh, budgets. And if there are any, I guess you'd call them, when all systems fail, kind of catastrophe events when they occur, you know, those are brought to our attention. Um, we have charters that list out exactly what our roles and responsibilities are. We can get them to you if you want to read them. They are online. Um, does that answer your question? Or are you looking for something more specific? That'll suffice. I have another, I have additional questions. Okay, uh, what's your next question? How many current DC members are on the DDA and SDA? All of us. It's written to where all the positions fall over the same on the board. So the business committee, the SDA, the DDA, the QCA, they are all essentially the BC who wears different hats when it comes to performing functions to that entity. Answer. Thank you. <clears throat> My next question is this. <clears throat> you stated you try to stay out of uh, the operate um, within different businesses uh, to an extent. <clears throat> Could you give me a brief description of the responsibilities of the business committee? In to each business that we own. I think the best way members. I think the best way to answer that as a business committee is kind of uh, the policy makers the tribe a lot of the policies we approve the policies that would, would be used for the day-to-day -day operations 
why you know we, we don't necessarily get involved in the day-to-day -day operations of going in and and uh trying to make decisions over a director or some something of that nature we we make the policies that those directors use to do the day-to-day -day work and the business committee is Thanks, governed sir. sorry the business committee is governed by the governing resolution and that governing resolution is not uh, too entirely long, but there are certain uh, positions up here that are listed and what our actual responsibilities are with that too. But overall, the business committee for the nation, they are here to act on behalf of the Quapaw Nation of Indians based from our governing resolution that we have. So does, does that clarify your question? Does that answer your question? Yes, and thank you. Um, a lot of it was retort. <clears throat> However, um, would it be fair to say that every business committee member the board as a whole is in charge of every director of all of our businesses. I guess what I'm trying to say is you guys are ultimately responsible for Yes, all organizational the charts as a whole. Yeah, all organizational charts lead up to a director and those directors report to the BC. Okay. With that being said, <clears throat> would you consider would would it be a fair statement to say that any current employee, director, or our director or manager sitting on the grievance committee would not be able to perform their task unbiasedly without fear of retaliation from yourselves as, as what you are mentioning ultimately, I mean ultimately you're Mr. Okay, Ben, what I was going to say is what you are mentioning has been brought up multiple times to me that there is a conflict with employees being on the grievance committee and the fear of their job. And in the past, I know that fear absolutely did happen. Um, I feel like that fear is not here, but it doesn't mean that it won't be here next year, the following year. Um, I would suggest when we have this special meeting next month, that that is addressed, that if we want to make that a qualification to where you can't be an employee and be on our grievance committee, then we can do that. But that's within the power of the general counsel, the people of the Quapaw Nation, and they can decide if they want to make that rule or not, because that committee was created by general counsel, and they are the only ones who have power to change it. So you have the power to propose it. You just got to, you know, get it pushed through to make it happen. So, so if, go ahead. Also, may I add? Um, I just I want to add. I, I'm sorry. Next no. week, not next month. Show up 10, 22, 22. <laughs> also, I just wanted to add, too, that the directors <laughs> at downstream, the direct, directors at downstream report to the general manager. And the general manager is who reports to us as far as the BC, not the directors. The directors don't report to the business committee at, down, at the casinos. They, they report to the GMs, and the GMs report to us. So I just wanted to kind of reiterate that as well. Thanks for clarifying the, uh, I'm aware of that as well. Thank you. I just wanted to, uh, have you guys identify the fact that ultimately you are in charge of every business, including all employees. Oh, in the, in Is the, that fair? Inaccurate? I would so 
how that organizational chart works, just to clarify a little bit more on this. On the tribal side, all those directors report up in the past have reported up to a tribal administrator. And the business committee is over the tribal administrator, not over each individual director directly. Yes, the, they report up to a director that reports up to the business committee, but we're, we meet with those directors uh, monthly, every quarter, roughly, just, just depending on what's going on. But when we meet with them, it is for them to bring us uh, things that they need, things that they need approval on from the business committee, and they they present them. And in the past, the tribal administrator has been present when they present them because that is their direct supervisor, not the business committee. So, yes, it all reports up to the business committee, but we are not any individual director's direct supervisor. Thank you for that clarifying that. Yeah, I just want to make sure that was kind of clear. And it's the same way on the casino sides as well. They they all report up to a general manager at each one of the casinos, ultimately reports up to the business. I do have a question. Okay, thank you. Um, He's still going. My next question was uh, the proposed budget of the million for the government side of our nation. How much of that is grant funded? If, if not all. I cannot give you an accurate figure on how much of it is grant funded and our uh, accounting manager, Guru, just stepped out of the room. Um, we can get that answer and get back to you. I, I can't even, I don't even want to throw a percentage out there because it is large. And a lot of this increase that we are incurring can be grant funded. It's just worst case scenario. It's just the bottom line, how much it's going to cost us. So I, I we can follow up with you on how much of it is grant funded, if you're okay with that. I'd appreciate that. Okay. Um, my next question, maybe Mr. Turley could answer. Yes. Or uh, Wayne Supernal uh, regarding the uh, marshal services and our um, EMTs and the uh, fire department. Are those specific departments? Fully grant funded? No, they're not fully grant funded. They they all receive all the public safety stuff. It receives a lot of grants, but it's not fully grant funded. No. Okay. Do Do we have um, any future plans to possibly? get a tribal jail established since we're um since you guys had stated that the increase in the partial presence and uh the increase in crimes reports that have been taken in 2022 yeah so and i, the, I, I believe the statement was made that uh May I just fix the mic? The, uh, the increase is, uh, sure. I think you're good now. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you a lot better now. Okay. Um, he, he has a statement, something along the lines of our sovereignty. Uh, making our work strong and the marshal's presence strong. It just seems logical that we would be pursuing efforts to uh, establish a uh, L system. So, so yes, uh, we have discussed that several times, and that is in something that we're looking at very. Uh, 
very strongly. Um, there is grants available for that. And we tried to apply for one this year, but, but by the time that we got all the information back to, to put that together, it was so close. We couldn't quite get the grant done in time, but we have that information now for next year's grant. And it just, with COVID and stuff, getting all those bids back from those vendors uh, to, to do something of that magnitude, it, it took way longer than we thought it was going to take. So uh, we, we've got that information back now. We've, we've looked at a couple different options. Is it better to buy a building and revamp it? Is it better to, to, to build one, uh, you know, from the ground up in a place that we want it? Uh, you know, not, not every neighborhood wants a jail going in right beside it. So, so we want to take that into consideration as well as where, where would you put something like that? And I don't think we would be looking at building a prison or something of that nature. It would be more of a temporary holding facility, uh, something small, you know, 10, 20 beds uh, that would allow uh, the marshal service to make that arrest and then hold that person there until they can find placement in another facility. Uh, you know, jails and things are not something that, that is that is cheap to run, although there is revenue that comes with that from holding those prisoners in that place. I think, uh, sir. My next question is regarding QSA. Has there any? Has there been any uh, additional Can you please repeat that? Have we secured future work um, with the Tar Creek Superfund? I I know we had uh, previously had guarantee uh, guaranteed five five years of work with. Uh, EPA, I believe, and ODEQ. Could you give us a updated report as to where we today and the future of QSA performing EPA work? So right now, um, I believe we are setting. Uh, we got about twenty-five years worth of work and funding lined up roughly, I believe. Um, and then I know in, in talks with our, our uh, environmental director, he, he talks with, with the EPA and uh, all those, those uh, departments on a regular basis. So that it is constantly being worked on uh, getting that set up. But the problem is you don't want to obtain funding for, you know, 50, 75 years out and not be able to perform the work. So, so it's kind of chunks, you know, five, 10, 15 year chunks at a time that we contract with. And then when we get, start getting that stuff lined up where we know where we're going to be in 15 years, then you start working on that next amount of funding. Yeah, I understand that Zach. And I appreciate your, uh, this to be forthcoming with, with that information. But my question is, you, like did you have 20, you guys have identified 25 years worth of work. How much of that has been secured? All has been. With monies allocated from the government to be I will, I will try to get confirmation on this, but I'm, I'm very sure that it, it, it is already secured in that plan. That's kind of part of the plan is as we as we put that stuff forward to them, they look at it and then they agree upon that that contract. And then another thing that we are working on with that is uh, um, expanding the uh, remediation or the uh, repository. Um, we're we're looking at expanding that and uh, making that bigger because we're going to run out of room at some point on the repository. Yeah, and they're even wanting us to work up towards uh, the Kansas Strip as well. So we do have work uh, lined out, and we can also come back and give you a confirmation on the environmental uh, 
questions that you're asking we we'll give you the actual numbers because they're not in front of us but we will follow up and get those to you same thing with the percentage um, last but not least go ahead i would like to uh applaud the good committee for her their actions taking um in regards to uh, Olson Smith, I think the great decision. That's all I have. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Waters. Do we have anybody else in open forum? Yep. I will go ahead and unmute you. Joita has requested to speak. Are you there, Joita? I sent the request. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. You have the floor. Okay, I just wanted to thank the business committee for reinstating me. And that um, I appreciate all of the tribal members and who supported me and wanted me to get my job back. Um, I, I'm very happy to be back, and I just wanted to say thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for those words, Joanna. That's all I have. Linda Davis. I just wanted to know before job descriptions are put in place, is and these are I'm referring to positions that are funded by the nation, general funds, not grants. Is there some sort of documentation shown that there was efforts made to secure a grant for those positions prior to using general funds for those positions? Is there anything that shows that there was, that efforts were made to use outside source of funding prior to the nation's personal funding? Yeah, we keep track of any and all grants that we seek and everything that gets denied, everything that gets awarded, everything that's pending. Yes, we have a, we get a monthly report from our grants department that tells us. And it also it explains why we might not have gotten something. It, it's very detailed. And the next question is just to try to remedy from what we just moved from. In situations where employees have reached out to their director and felt that those weren't resolved, what is that person's, that employee's next route within staying within the chain of command without getting reprimanded for going to the BC to try to resolve a matter that's trying to be held in the department or held in administration and not letting a voice be heard? There is a chain of command. And, you know, in the event that happens, you would go over them and go straight to their director. And if that director happens to be the BC, then so be it. You know, if, if they're the director who reports to us, then you would come to us and let us know what the problem is so we could address it. And it's just one of those things, you know, as far as retaliation goes, we know it's on our radar. You know, we know there's going to be retaliation if that person comes after you. So I want everybody to feel safe. Um, Mr. Shawnee the other day was looking at it and, you know, he wants to make some changes to our handbook as far as our employee dispute policy goes. And then we're also working on the um, tarot policy as well. So we are moving forward. It's a slow process, but it is happening. So soon. On, on that tarot deal, I'm glad you said that. We, we received the second draft, I believe, uh, about four or five days ago, something like that, maybe a week ago. And everybody's currently going through that. And that as soon as we get through that, if there's any remediation or anything that needs to happen, that'll go back to the attorneys. And then we should hopefully next month be approving that tarot code. It's in the works. So thank you for bringing it to our attention. Ms. Heather Dispuke. I do have a question about the tarot. Um, I know you guys are 
going to be approving it, but since it was something that was voted on by general counsel, shouldn't general counsel view what is being done and approve that? Because honestly, with the past history of what has been going on, honestly, we would, I, I as a tribal member would feel particularly um, secure in having that tarot department, having an unbiased opinion by all of general counsel and having all of general counsel look at that and say, you know what, actually, this is exactly what our people want because it's exactly what Linda was talking about where we want to be heard and especially as employees have that protection where we're not getting attacked or penalized and so having that tarot department being built with an unbiased opinion so i would just like to request that before you guys finalize it i think that's something that we could easily happen. make happen yes and we've also been talking and we've all talked about it but i'm glad that you know weena has brought it to the board too to kind of refresh in the idea a lot of this stuff that we're doing it is huge it they are big big decisions like the correctional facility that's a big situation so is the tarot so is saracen casino and building a hotel there's a lot of things that we've got going on and we you know as a board really want to bring it back to the people for you guys to weigh in because it's it belongs to the nation it belongs to the people not to us so i think we can absolutely give it a whirl and try to make that happen so thank you oh yeah billboard kelly. answer miss kelly it's coming kelly's still on there okay perfect all right so i got your answer on the billboards um saracen has a significant billboard presence in and around little rock uh 70 of our play is from central arkansas in the little rock area and that's where they focus with their billboards. Um, for example, the most uh, valuable billboard space in the state are the large digitals on 630. Uh, we have them east and west bound, uh, and we focus primarily on car giveaways or similar draws to advertise a casino instead of just straight Saracen casino signs. Until we have the hotel grabbing interstate traffic uh, isn't necessarily a priority. So that's why they're not right there by the casino. So they're trying to draw those people instead because they have two choices from Little Rock. They can either go to Hot Springs or they can go to Saracen. So we try to grab that group of people uh, out of Little Rock instead of them going to uh, Hot Springs to um, the other casino. All right, thank you for getting that answer, Mr. Turley. Does anybody else have anything for open forum? It's a good long open forum today. I've been requested to speak again. I will give you permission to mute. Okay, Mr. Waters, you have the floor again. I apologize for the gaps in my speaking to echo. How do you guys plan on funding this uh, proposed or approved Arrow department. Just a little bit on tarot. Um, our tarot office, any company that would uh, try to do business with a Quapaw entity uh, would have to pay to uh, become a part of their tarot office. So that's one way of getting it funded. We set the amount that that company would have to pay in order to do business with Quapaw Nation. So right now, that's probably the best we can do. I encourage everybody before general counsel to read up on this tarot act. And when we present it, it'll be your choice whether you want to pursue it or not. There's no guarantees on it. There's no guarantees on tribal employee rights on it because uh, yeah, the company would have to comply with our tarot act to be able to do business with us, but we, those companies also do not have to do business with us. So, but yeah, definitely read up on the tarot act. Thank you, Mike, Shani. I've uh, done some research on tarot. Um, I'm 
my concern was the funding of the department itself. And, um, your guys' existing salaries would just the question would the BC as a whole be open to the suggestion of a decrease in salary to fund this tarot department? As tarot will it be essentially. Undertaking some of your responsibilities. Ben, business committee compensation is exclusively up to the general counsel. That is not a BC decision. I'm aware of that. That's ultimately it's it's I'm in essence, exactly. and I'm not trying to be smart aleck, but it's it's up to you guys to decide that. So if you want to propose that, you're more than welcome to propose it on 10 22 22. I want everybody there. <laughs> you too, Ben. I mean it. But Ms. Supernaw is absolutely correct. It is in the hands of, I'm sorry, Ms. Supernaw is absolutely correct. It is in the hands of general counsel. And what you guys choose to do is what we have to follow. So if that's what you would like to see, you know, you can absolutely propose that. And we are constantly looking for funding and we're working on getting the debt paid down on our casino so we can lift that. And then we're really going to rock and roll with our own money and not have to really depend on anybody else. And that's the ultimate goal. And we're almost there just a few more months. And I think we're really going to be setting pretty and all of you will have a great update and it's going to be happy day. So it's good things. We're, we're punching it down, but um, when, uh, Ben, are you done? Do you have any more questions? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I think Heather's got a good point about the uh, tarot. Yes, but when we're the uh, documents or what have you that, that make up this, their standards. So will you guys hold off on presenting that to you? I think everybody up here so far is completely fine with giving it to general counsel to look at. Let us get through, um, let us take a look at it and edit it and throw it out there for public review. I say we could probably get it done by November 1st when we're doing the FEMA mitigation plan and put them both online so you guys can look at them and do public review and get back to us. And then we'll get it put out there on a vote for general counsel. Why not? Let's start having a whole bunch of general counsels making some action happen. And, and the reason I said we would approve it next month is it just, I've just been trying to, all of us have been trying to get that done because it was requested at general counsel. So we're, we're trying to show that we're trying to get what you guys want. It just takes time to do those things because there's uh, the attorneys and stuff have put a lot of effort into getting this all together for us. So that's, I was just trying to let you know we're, we're headed in that direction. So. Last question, uh, which attorneys are you referring to that are handling? General, our general legal counsel is Witten Burge out of Oklahoma City. And we currently have okay, our attorney you. online if you'd like to talk to him. Oh. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Amy? Hi. I'd like to thank Mike Shawnee and Winnes uh, Supernaw and Steve Stan for good work. I think they know what I'm talking about. Thank you. Anybody else? Ah, oh, you're welcome. I'm excited. I'm glad we can make it happen. Anybody else for open forum before we go to closed session? Okay, the time is let's say 1130 and we are going to now go into closed session. Oh, I know. Call it at noon, man. 30 minutes. Oh, true. How they do that? Okay, we are going to go ahead and call the meeting back to order. It is noon. And Miss Weena Supernall, will you please give a report on the closed session? 
Yes, um, we met with the grievance committee over a tribal member question, and the business committee has agreed to respond by October the 31st. Thank you. And Ms. Newton, will you please give the benediction? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here together to um, discuss and um, share business, Lord, for our nation. We just ask, Lord, that you be with this business committee, Lord, each day as we um, continue to do our very best to, to help move our nation along. And we just thank you, Lord, for our general counsel, Lord, and the input and help us to work together more and more. Lord, help us each day to figure out new ways um, to come together and to um, continue to move our nation forward and be successful. We just be with those, Lord, for whatever reason that we're able to be here today. We just um, ask that you wrap your arms around them. Help us as we travel, head home, give everyone safe traveling mercies. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Can I get a <clears throat> motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. Meeting is adjourned. Gunnagay. Thank you.